looking at the colour red. Red, like my ladybird. Ladybird, ladybird, red and black. How many spots are on your back? Come to me, then you'll see how very gentle I can be. How many spots can you see? Six. I spy with my little eye something crunchy and red. Red apples. A red watermelon, there's some red strawberries, red cherries, red tomatoes, lots and lots of red things. Maybe you could colour a truck, a fire engine, like Fireman Sam's. That's red too. Little Red Riding Hood Once upon a time, a loving family lived in a cosy house in the woods. There was a father and a mother and their only child, a bright and happy little girl. The child was called Little Red Riding Hood because everywhere she went, she wore a red velvet hood and cape. The hood and cape had been made by the girl's grandmother, whom Little Red Riding Hood loved very much. One morning, Little Red Riding Hood's mother told her that her grandmother was in bed with a cold. She was feeling very poorly. She handed Red a basket full of goodies and asked her to take the treats to Grandma. Little Red Riding Hood was very happy to visit her Grandma who lived deep in the forest at the end of the trail. Now remember, her mother said as she straightened her little red hood, stay on the path and don't stray off into the woods. And whatever you do, don't talk to strangers. Now a stranger is someone you don't know. Red kissed her mother on the cheek and promised to be very careful. Little Red Riding Hood skipped happily down the path to Grandma's house. It was a warm and sunny day and though her grandma was sick, Red was sure the basket full of soup and bread and fresh fruit would make the old woman feel much better. As she went along the path, Little Red came across a woodsman. He was happy to see his friend Red Riding Hood and he greeted her with a cheerful hello and asked her where she was off to. Little Red Riding Hood told the woodsman about her sick grandmother and the goodies she was taking to her. You be careful, Red, said the woodman. I just saw a wolf down the trail. Make sure you stay away from him. Little Red Riding Hood nodded her head. If I see him, I'll be careful. And then she said goodbye and continued on her way. The woodsman watched as she went down the path and continued his work among the trees. Off in the forest, the big bad wolf wandered, looking for something to eat. He'd seen a woodman earlier, but was careful to stay away from him. Hungry as he was, the wolf knew better than to mess with a woodsman. As he roamed with his stomach growling, the wolf suddenly heard footsteps on the path. He looked out from behind a tree and saw Little Red Riding Hood. Aha, he said to himself. That child will fill my tummy nicely. As Little Red Riding Hood approached, the big bad wolf popped out from behind the trees and stood in the middle of the trail. He was so hungry, he wanted to eat Red right there and then, but he worried that the woodsman might come along and catch him. He bowed low and smiled at Little Red Riding Hood and said, hello there, little one. Nice day, isn't it? Pretending to be kind. Little Red Riding Hood was a very smart child and she was determined not to fall for any of his tricks. She looked the wolf in the eye and said, 
I do not talk to strangers. The wolf smiled wider. My dear child, don't you know who I am? Red nodded her head. Oh, I know all right. You're the big bad wolf. Oh, that's right, replied the wolf. You see, I'm not a stranger after all, and I'm not so bad. So where are you headed, my little friend? asked the wolf. Little Red Riding Hood explained that she was off to see her grandma, who wasn't feeling very well. The wolf offered to walk with her, but Red shook her head. No, thank you. I can make it on my own. Besides, she said with suspicion, I've been warned about you. Is that so? the wolf asked slyly. Then please don't let me keep you any longer. And he set aside to let Red pass. And the sneaky wolf watched Red as she walked down the path and out of sight. Being very familiar with the woods, he knew of a shortcut that would allow him to reach Grandma's house before Red. He ran as fast as he could through the trees and soon the big wolf stood at Grandma's door. The wolf knocked softly on the door. From within the cottage, he heard Grandma say in a frail voice, uh, It's me, it's Grandma. And the wolf said, Hello, Grandma, it's me, Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, come in then, dear, said Grandma. And the big bad wolf opened the door and went inside. <gasps> Grandma let out a gasp when she saw the wolf. Ha, 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 surprise, Granny, he said, as he neared her bed. She tried to shout as he got closer, but he was so scared that no sound came out. Come on now, into the closet with you, growled the wolf as he forced Grandma out of the bed and pushed her into the cupboard. After locking Grandma in the cupboard, the wolf put on her bathrobe and her nightcap. He climbed into bed and pulled the covers up over his nose and waited for Little Red Riding Hood to arrive. When Little Red Riding Hood arrived at Grandma's house, she knocked on the door. A low, scratchy voice from within came. Dear child. Oh my, Grandma sounds very sick, thought Red to herself as she opened the door and went inside. Little Red Riding Hood stood, stood at the end of her grandmother's bed. How strange and different Grandma seemed. Red pointed at the big feet that stuck out from beneath the covers. Oh, Granny, did you get new furry slippers? <laughs> The wolf smiled and said in a high-pitched voice, pretending to be Granny, uh, uh, Oh, why, yes, new slippers. Do you like them? Red laughed. They certainly are big, Granny. But something about Grandma didn't seem quite right to Red. Grandma looked so odd, and even with a cold, her voice sounded too low and gruff. Red looked a little closer. You know, Grandma, she said, I've never noticed before what big eyes you have. The wolf chuckled a little and answered, Oh, why, my dear child, all the better to see you with. Hop up here. Red looked a little more closely at Grandma as she lay in the bed. Oh, and Grandma! I've never noticed before what big hands you have. And the wolf replied pleasantly, oh, Well, my dear, all the better to hug you with. Red, who was starting to feel a little nervous, leaned closer to Grandma to get a better look. Why, Grandma, I've never noticed what big ears you have. <laughs> all the better to hear you with, my dear, said the wolf, pretending to be Grandma. Oh, and Grandma, what big teeth you have. 
all the better to eat you with, said the wolf. And with that, he threw off the bed covers and ran to Little Red Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood let out a cry. Ah! When she saw the wolf revealed, he moved slowly toward her, and closer and closer until Red was backed against the wall with nowhere to run. Oh, you'll be a fine meal for me, the wolf said with a hungry grin with his big teeth. And he reached out his big paws to grab her. Red was sure that it was all over for her when suddenly there was a loud bang and the door came crashing open. It was the woodsman. Ha ha, I thought you might be up to mischief, you rascal, the woodsman said as Red ran to his side. The big bad wolf held up his paws and cried, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Please let mercy on me. As he backed fearfully away from the woodsman, the woodsman pointed his finger at the wolf. Get out of here, you no good beast. And he gave the wolf a very angry stare. Or else. And the wolf ran out of the door when he saw the woodsman's axe. And he scurried off down the path with his tail between his legs. And after the wolf was out of sight, the woodsman turned to Red and asked if she was okay. But before she could answer, a little shy voice came from the closet. Um, can I come out now, dearies? The woodsman opened the closet door and helped Grandma back to her bed. The poor old woman was a little shaken, but none the worse for wear. Her eyes lit up when she saw the basket of goodies that Red had bought, and they all enjoyed a very pleasant visit that day. They shared the treats and giving thanks that everything had turned out well for Grandma and Little Red Riding Hood, and that nasty old wolf was never seen or heard of again. Here they are enjoying their tasty treats. What a wicked wolf. And wasn't Little Red Riding Hood lucky? Could have been much worse. She shouldn't have talked to strangers. The story of Little Red Riding Hood. Here she is with her little red cape and her basket of goodies for Grandma. Little Red Riding Hood. That's me. Once there was a girl whose granny made her a bright red cloak with a lovely red hood. It had two big pockets and bright shiny buttons. She wore it so often that people called her Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, hello, I'm Little Red Riding Hood. One day, the girl's mother gave her a basket of cakes and said, take this to your granny. She's not very well, poor thing, and always stay on the path where people can see you. What was in her basket? She had lots of red things because granny loved red. There were red strawberries and a red strawberry tart. I have a red tomato and a red watermelon and a red strawberry cake. Now off I go into the woods with my basket. Going to see Grandma who's very poorly. I hope she feels better soon. Little Red Riding Hood hadn't gone very far when she saw some bluebells growing in the wood. I've got a brilliant idea, she thought. I'm going to pick some for Granny. She hadn't listened to what Mummy said about staying on the path. Going to pick some bluebells. Let's go into the woods. Before long, she was spotted by a hungry wolf. Dum, dum, dum. Mm. Mm. You look a treat in that red hood. Mm. Who made it for 
for you. My granny said the girl, who'd never seen a wolf before. She's not feeling well and I'm taking her some cakes to cheer her up. Must be the apple of her eye, said the wolf, who was a rotten core himself. Where does your granny live? Oh, her house is um, near the stream, a cottage right at the back of the wood. It's not far from here, said Little Red Riding Hood. Just then they heard someone whistling a tune. It was a woodcutter coming through the woods. Perhaps we'll meet again, said the sly wolf. And he slipped away into the bushes before the woodcutter could see him. Oh, bye, said Little Red Riding Hood. Sometime later, the wolf found Granny's house. He knocked on the door. Who could it be, thought Granny. Oh, hello, Grandmother. It, it's your granddaughter, Little Red Riding Hood. The wolf pretended. Oh, better lift the latch and come in then, said Granny. And the wolf trotted into the house. Mmm, he thought, you look nice enough to eat too, and I'm hungry. Just then, he heard Little Red Riding Hood would open the garden gate. Quickly, the wolf locked Granny in the wardrobe, so the wolf quickly put on Granny's hat and her dressing gown, and he climbed into bed and pulled the covers up over his nose. Knocked Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, oh, do come in, dear, said the big bad wolf. Just lift the latch. Now Little Red Riding Hood went inside. And the wolf continued to pretend to be Grandma. Are you wearing your new red cape? Closer so I can see you. Little Red Riding Hood came closer. Granny was bundled up in bed with the blankets pulled right to her nose. But it wasn't Granny at all. It was a tricky big bad wolf. Oh, Granny, said Red Riding Hood. What big eyes you have. All the better to see you with, my dear, said the big bad wolf. Oh, oh, Granny, what big ears you have, said Little Red Riding Hood. All the better to hear you with, my dear, said the big bad wolf. Oh, Granny, what a big nose you have said Little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> All the better to smell you with, my dear, sniggered the wolf. Oh, Granny, what big teeth you have, cried Little Red Riding Hood. Ha, 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 all the better to eat you with, snarled the wolf. And he leapt out of bed and grabbed Little Red Riding Hood, but she jumped back and threw her basket at him. Help, 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 they cried. And she was loud enough to be heard in the woods. Help! And she started running towards the door. A moment later, the woodcutter arrived. Leave that girl alone, he shouted, leaping at the wolf with his axe. Now it was the wolf's turn to run. Pots and pans went crashing to the ground. Jugs flew and most of Granny's homemade lemonade ended up on the floor. The wolf slipped on it. He skidded and skated until at last he was cornered and flattened. Moo! Chomp! Chomp! went the woodcutter. 
and almost chopped off the wolf's tail. And he jumped up and leapt out of the window and running away with his tail tucked between his legs. I think that's the last we've seen of that horrible creature, said the woodcutter. He'll never dare come out of the woods again. And I think he's probably right. The wolf was scared of the woodcutter. Just then, Little Red Riding Hood heard, heard knocking coming from the wardrobe. It was Granny. She was overjoyed to see Little Red Riding Hood all safe and sound. I knew the fur would start flying when you got here, Granny said to the woodcutter. Now let's clear up and then we'll have something to eat. After they'd eaten some of the treats from the basket, Little Red Riding Hood thanked the woodcutter for saving their lives and she kissed Granny goodbye. On her way home, she saw some buttercups growing in the woods. She wanted to stop and pick some, but this time she remembered what her mother had said. And so she stayed on the path and kept walking until she got safely home. That was a better idea. Now, do you know anybody that's poorly? Maybe you could make them a get well card. That would cheer them up. Thank you for listening to the story. Now, if you've got some red material at home, maybe you could dress up, pretend to be Little Red Riding Hood. Uh, you might even have an outfit that you can wear, like Little Red Riding Hood. Or you might want to be the big bad wolf. <gasps> what have we got for the big bad wolf? And you could chase Little Red Riding Hood. <coughs> or you might want to dress up as Granny. You could put on your cap and pull up the bed covers very poorly. Oh, I really don't feel very well. So you could try retelling the story again in your own words. See what you can remember. Or you might have some puppets that you can retell the story. I've got an upside down door. And she turns, there's the wolf pretending to be grandma. And I have a wolf puppet. Maybe you've got some at home or you could find something or make something and you could retell the story using puppets. Or you could draw a picture of the story. Whatever you choose.